we know how important that is, and that's why I say it's the, the fans you're representing and the, the people that's went before you. You know, that's the, you're representing the people that's here nowadays, but it's the people that's went before you over many, many, many years. You know, the history of the club, that's what you're representing because it's always been the Derby match in that respect. So we want to make sure that we can put that victory on for them. For football fans, there's nothing quite like Derby Day. The nerves, the excitement, the roller coaster of emotions, the passion, the songs, the goals, the bragging rights, the memories. It's what makes these occasions so special. For the Femme Athletic, the upcoming fixture with Wraith Rovers carries extra significance. It's an opportunity to pick up the first three points of the season and kickstart the championship campaign. The Pars pride themselves as being a winning club and manager Peter Grant would love nothing more than to send the fans home happy on Tuesday night. It's great to be back at football, it's great to have the supporters back in and as I say so, We've not given them the joy so far, we're getting the victories that we, we, we want to get and that's the biggest thing for us, we're desperate to get that victory, you know, to put a smile on their faces anyway. It just happens to be that the next game is a, a local derby, you know, we're desperate to win it. It'd be fantastic if we could put that, that first W on the board really, then as I said, but we'll need to work extremely hard for that and it'd be fantastic to send the fans home happy on Tuesday evening and that, that's, that's the evening, that's what you're trying to do every time you're out on the football pitch. As I said, it just happens to be it's a local derby with that added ingredient as well. It gives you that personal pride and local pride that you can rub off for the next to the next game that arrives. I think everyone knows what derby games are about. That there's the extra hype with a local rivalry, if you like, and, and it's a big one for the fans and the club to, to get the bragging rights, if you like. So we know that's part of this match and that's what's at stake as well as the points. So um, there'll be a little bit extra bite to the game. There's no doubt it's always the same in, in any derby. Um, and we'll, we'll be up for that and, and, and then we look to implement our plan on top of that as well. Obviously I missed out a little bit last year with, with the no fans and, and playing in this fixture in the playoffs. That would have been a great you know, atmosphere to have the fans behind us on that particular, um, the, the particular games. But it wasn't to be, but look, the players will want to put on a performance that make the, the crowd um, proud. Um, that's first and foremost and hopefully we can, we can get a result to do that. Obviously I played in a couple here uh, last season, but without any fans so uh, I think you know we're all looking forward to the game Tuesday and uh, it'll be a great time to get our first win I think um, the game down there the one each um, we maybe could have won in the end so we're all looking forward to it um, especially being at home our fans and stuff so uh, I'm sure it'll be a, a good occasion If the players weren't already aware of what's at stake though then all they need to do is chat the door of long serving kit man Mo Hutton The atmosphere's great for the start it was horrible when the crowds were not but uh, I think our best occasion was with 11, 2015. Uh, Martin Hardy, very close game, 1-1, one, one, and then Hardy scores one for about 35 yards, just lines up and seems he's going to go that the top pocket. Bang, there it went. It just, the place just went crazy. I love going through there as well. I mean, it's a good atmosphere, you know what I mean? I'm not so clever with the plastic pitch, but it is a good surface. And they have got that wee edge on it. They are good at knocking it about, and they make it slick. It's always wetter than. But the uh, nice thing in here, and hopefully we could get our first win this season. Uh, kick on. We're not far away from it. Just need a wee bit of rub of the green, I think. So a good contest. Can you speak with the players before the game and kind of let them know the significance of the fixture? Oh, picture? certainly. Yes, yeah. so there's one or two adjectives flung in. One player who knows all about the importance of the fixture is the Fernland diehard Paul Allen. Having come through the youth ranks, the midfielder is now living the dream by playing for his boyhood heroes. So I've been at Dunfermline since I was a young boy, maybe I'd say like 10, 11 year old. I used to play in a boys club that was run just by my uncle and then I managed to work my way into the ranks of Dunfermline, like you said, from a young kid. So working my way up to this stage now is quite mad to be fair. Um, it's been a long journey but a good one at the same time, I've learned a lot of things and Hopefully I can kick off for where I am now. Are you pretty much living the dream playing for your club? <laughs> I at the moment, I, um, I, like I said, um, when I come play at East End, I look up and my dad's still in the stand and that's where I used to watch when I was a wee kid, so it's kind of kind of crazy, like a wee dream now, so hopefully I can just stay in and then kick on for you. Does your old man have a season ticket in? Ah, he's still got a season ticket, him and uh, my uncle actually comes well, him and my granddad, so it's like a wee, we family reunion up there behind the goals. It's a massive game um, for me, especially being a Dunfermline fan when I was growing up coming to the games. I know like what the atmosphere was like and 
the, all the players know, especially the situation we're in now, it's a massive game for us to go and try and kick on and get that first win of the season. Obviously you're, you're from this area, a local lad, do you have any friends that are Rafe Rovers fans that will be at the game? Or? I don't actually have any Rafe Rovers fans now. Um, I know a few of my mates will come and watch and I don't know, hopefully they'll cheer me on, they could, uh, could be slaughtering me but um, just one that I'm looking forward to and I'm sure I'll, I'll see people in the crowd that, that I recognise. I love having people, that was one of the reasons I attended the job here, when I spoke to the chairman he's got a great pride in being the family chairman and he's a big, big supporter of the club and as you say, like say Paul and that, I think it's fantastic if you can bring young players through and it's equally better if you can get ones that's local. You know, so for Paul and that and his family have local uh, to have season books, sorry, it's fantastic and to see their boy on their pitch we give them great pride and he's earned that, you know, and as I say always you always said I dream of playing for certain clubs or whatever. Many players have told you that over the, and I had that myself. I was very fortunate in that respect. You always felt you were the, the punter that got lucky. You know, as the great Tommy Burns said, you know, and I think that's fact, you know, I, I think there is no doubt of that. We had a great pride, it's a club you supported and you always thought you'd just be a supporter and take the opportunity to pull on the jersey and play for your supporters in front of them and you have an opportunity to affect the game on the pitch and Paul's done tremendously well and I'm absolutely delighted and gives me greater pride in seeing young players and the special local boys coming through to play for their boyhood dream uh, club so hopefully that's the case and hopefully we can get him the victory that he sends his him and his family home uh, happy. 12 points separate the five rivals heading into the game with Rafe third and then Fenland rooted bottom of the championship. You know, so we know we'll have to be our best. Um, but as I say, I've got a great trust in our players. I know they've got the talent, you know, we've got to have the work ethic, the graft, the determination to succeed. And as you say, you get into local derbies and people say, well, how do you prepare for that? You, you don't really. It's the game that you want to win. You More than anything else, you'll take something enough to somebody's backside. It doesn't matter how you play because you know it's that local pride that's there and everybody wants to do well against their derby in the derby match and we're no different you know and I think it's so important for us that we start right because if you give Wraith a foothold they're more than capable of keeping the ball and creating chances and they've got guys that can score goals but I know exactly we've got exactly the same thing you know and that's, that's what makes it for a very close encounter and as I say we know we have to be our best to try and get that result. I think derby games you know from previous experience I think form going into the type of games doesn't matter. I think both teams see it, like I've said, it's that extra bite in, in the fixtures that previous results doesn't really matter. Um, so it's just one that we will kind of separate from the rest and, and, and try and get the points. Five draws from the Fenland's last six games at least give supporters optimism that a big result is just around the corner. It'd be fantastic against anyone, but because it's the next game, it'd be brilliant to try and get that victory because I'm desperate to do that. That's my job as a manager, is to win games of football. Unfortunately, the, the league programme so far this season, I've not managed to do that. Um, there's other there games I think we should have uh, should have won with the chances we had and we created and, as I said, made, made bad errors to cost us dearly. Um, and we're looking for that performance to get the, the solidity, you know, but also that not to take away the freedom that, we'll, as I say, that I expect and the quality that I have to win matches. And I know I've got match winners and I think as a manager that's what you always hope that you have match winners and there's no doubt that throughout the group I've got match winners that can win us games of football and create chances for us. But you still have to work for that solid foundation as well. So it's a game I'm really looking forward to and it'd be fantastic being a local derby to get the first three points. I know we've not had a win but we're going into the game thinking we can win every game. Um, and that's you know the mindset we have to have where we're not where we want to be, like I've said, and it's about getting that win and, and starting getting some points on the board. Um, with my dad and that coming to the game, I'm sure with it being the derby, if I'm, if I'm playing, which I hope I am, um, it's one that I'd love to win, especially in front of the home crowd. And then to score, would that just be a three-point <laughs> To score would be, I don't know what the celebration may be, but um, hopefully we can see if it comes. Uh, it's a, <laughs> a goal with a game I'd love to score in anyway. Um, I've been lucky enough to do it, obviously in other derbies, so I want to do it here as well. Um, there's no better feeling, um, and you know I think we're all desperate. You want to be the one who scores and whatever, but I think the position we're in, you know, as long as we win that game, um, but ultimately whoever scores is going to be the hero. It's just one of these things in a derby. I'm hoping to you, I think, just because of the, the five game at the, the other season there, it was just a wee bit heavy that one. The, the defeat was just. It was a bit embarrassing, but yeah, we've not really got a week yet, so we'll have to we'll fight one here, we do as well, eh? See what happens.
shop opened today at 12 o'clock and for the first two hours we were very busy, <laughs> very busy. It's just tailed off now, but an hour you'll start getting busy again. I have a direct, mainly the hospitality, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm the province of the Kingdom of Fife, so I'm quite busy, eh? Uh, but no, I always come to the home games, mainly the home games, and go down and get a crack with it. The punters down there, it's great. So you enjoy getting out amongst the fans? And well, it depends what team they're for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Peter Heatherson's going to come up and uh, chat, chat to me tonight. And Jerry Farrell, so it'll be, it'll be a good crack. We'll get a good laugh in. Uh, are you going to give us a score prediction? Oh, I think it'll be, it'll be. They're always close games, eh? They'll know always because we've got hammered five down down there uh, not that long ago. But usually a close game. I'm, I'm looking for a... a a wee, bit, uh, a wee bit better luck, just now we get a victory. I'm always, I always want Duff Elmy one, no matter who we're playing. Yes, it's always nice to have uh, one over the wee team from prizes, you know. But, uh, it's it's advantage of that, but you know, obviously you've got the bigger range of utility and these sort of things, but uh, no, this is a five that I've been uh, that wouldn't be missing. What sort of ass do you expect from me? Oh, well, really. Noisy. Yeah, both set of supporters are uh, of a noisy bunch amongst them. And, uh, yeah, depends how it goes. Have you got a score prediction? I hope we win one nothing. Yeah. I know we've started off badly this season, but I think we've got a good team and we just need to get into the flow of things we've done in the last couple of games against teams higher than the league we've drawn with them so we're doing a win in the flicks tonight uh, It's obviously a really passionate occasion eh? you want to get one off on your rivals just like any other rivalry um, for us this season it's got even more meaning because of the gap that's between the teams at the moment um, we just really need a win tonight and hopefully it comes I've been going here for a long time, uh, since, that's why I watched the film in 1950, so I think I've probably been it, I've been saying every one since then. Um, does it mean to me it, because it's a big game? Is it as big as the Falkirk that would be? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I think, um, I think if you're going to an away game there, Certainly friendly, you know. You can uh, you can have a you can have a few drinks in the town and get funny. We always kind of um, have a good day out there and, uh, and, and have a good bit of banter with the, the Rovers fans. Uh, good natured banter. Uh, I think you can't really do that if you're going to Falkirk. It's not something you would ever you would ever think about doing. So, um, well, yeah, it's a keenly fought derby and uh, always always enjoyable. Like um, I'd say, uh, it's probably it's, it's our biggest game. Eh? It's one that you don't want to lose. It's one you definitely want to win. Any favourite memories of this game? Uh, I've got a couple actually. Right. So uh, the very, very first one I got. So in 2009, I got so my first ever pint in the Penny Farm, and I was 15. Fantastic. <laughs> then I came out the pub, went down the street, then I got bottled. That wasn't ideal. And then uh, went into the ground, and we won it with a last minute own goal. It was awesome. And that is up there with my top day of football. Right. Uh, a few years later, 2011, played when uh, in the town side with Martin Hardy, we call it. And uh, we beat them 2 1 after we won them down at half time, and that's probably, probably the ultimate of film maybe that I doubt we'll be top to win a couple of things. It doesn't get any better.
So, the result of the Fairman so badly wanted just wasn't to be. Dom Thomas broke the deadlock off a sensational 25-yard strike early in the second half, but Brad Spencer broke Paz Hearts by snatching an 88th-minute equaliser for Rafe Rovers to deny Peter Grant's men a first league win of the season. Frustrated. I don't know whether to be disappointed or angry. I saw the mix, obviously, the mix of emotions, because I thought they'd put so much into it. I um, thought we played a lot of good stuff. I thought we had opportunities to kill the game off with the final pass, which I've felt in a lot of games. Um, and then the goal's criminal, actually, because we clear the ball and then we don't clear the box. And it's the easiest thing in football. When the ball's cleared, you've got to move up the pitch. And we didn't do it. And, it cost, and then we've got to go out and block, block it, not turn our backside. And all the wee small details, if you don't clear your box, then it's, there's no room for error because the goalkeeper can't see it. And it's through the player's legs or whatever. But at that time, you've got to throw everything at it to make sure that shot doesn't come away and you're defending your goal. And we didn't do that. And I feel for them, you know, because they put so much in it and deserve so much more from it. But unfortunately, that's the way it seems to be at this moment in time.